title of my message is The Vision of the Coming Christ and His Kingdom. <clears throat> Key verses is uh, verse 13 and 14. Leave it alone, but very meaningful. Let's read it together. What is Let's read it together. Yeah, please. In my vision and night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. The first ancient of the east was led in his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All people, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. His kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. <clears throat> okay. Let's keep these words in our mind. Thank God for blessing our study of the book of Daniel up to chapter 6. In chapter 6, it was proclaimed that God is the living God. And Daniel had living faith. I think we still do this wonderful prayer life diligent and devoted to prayer life. We may also have a living faith to make our prayer life alive. The first six chapters in the book of Daniel are mostly history. It is just a, with a bit of a prediction. The last six chapters in Daniel a mostly prediction, but it's just a little bit of history. Chapter 7 is solely the future prophecy that sweeps the whole history of the future world from the life of Daniel to the return of Jesus Christ. Then in chapters 8 through 12, Indeed, the elements are there to read. So, panorama comes in chapter 7. It's a single chapter. It's the most comprehensive, pervasive, and panoramic future prophecy in the entire Old Testament, even in the New Testament. This one chapter. This chapter 7 is a long vision which has three segments. The four beasts, the advice of the sea, the scene of the ancient, the ancient of days on the throne, and Christ being given his kingdom as he comes in glory to the earth. Truly, this is a Great chapter, I really help us to try to grasp this wonderful chapter, Daniel chapter 7. This first one says, In the first year of Belshazzar, King of Babylon, Daniel had a dream. These visions passed through his mind as he was lying on his bed. He wrote the substance of his dream. In chapters 2 and 4, Daniel interpreted the dreams of King Nebuchadnezzar. In chapter 2 and 4, he interpreted the dreams of King Nebuchadnezzar. In chapter 7, he had his own dream with his interpretation given from heaven. And visions passed through his mind. I believe this is the result of his deep, his deep prayer life. Visions of the future world passed through his mind. He wrote that it was in the first year of Abu Belsaja when he had that dream. So, Daniel was in his old age, probably coming close 90 years of age. Still, he was in Babylonian Empire. The description 
the first year of Persian Central Babylon. The short description shows that what he wrote here is a rarity in the world. The substance is directly related to the history of the world. So fascinating, in fact, and too great to talk about. And Bristol says, Bristol, Daniel said, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me, four winds of heaven, turning up the great sea. This is an excellent description concerning the state of the world, or the state of people and nations of the world. The world is a violent, turbulent sea. In Daniel Beverage chapter 17, an angel said to John, daughters you saw, where the prostitutes sit are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The world in a raising, disturbed turmoil because of sin. Here, particularly charmed by the four winds of heaven, surely blowing from the four corners of the earth. Let God is in control. God is sovereign, his control, ruling the world to accomplish his divine grand purpose. And here, the Great Sea seems to refer the Mediterranean Sea, Mediterranean Sea. For Bible mentions only four seas, basically four seas, the Sea of Galilee, a small lake, Dead Sea, Lazarus Lake, where the sea, just a narrow strip of waters, the Mediterranean Sea, which is often called the Great Sea. Human civilization was born at the Mediterranean area, and that reason was the heart of human history. Daniel, of course, lived in the Mediterranean Sea, and in his vision, he stands on the shore of the largest sea he ever seen. And then he says, four great beasts, which are different from the others, came up out of the sea. Your four great beasts are four kingdoms that will rise from the earth. According to verse 17. Here you are reminded of the four kingdoms that the French I saw in his dream, interpreted by Daniel. In his dream, the French saw an enormous dazzling statue of a gold head, silver, arms, chest and arms, bronze, belly and thighs, iron feet and iron legs, the feet of mixture of iron and clay. In that statue, four old empires were represented, Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and Rome. And these four world empires were mentioned here again, yet from different perspectives. The metals of gold, silver, bronze, and iron were shining and something valuable. But the beasts, the beasts were monstrosities, bloody and fearful. From man's perspective, kingdoms of the world are something Marvelous, thrilling, and colossal. But from God's point, they are ugly, wild, murderous, and bloody. Man 
looks on his empires as achievements. But God looks on them as out of control and chaos. Different perspectives are there. Let's see the description of each empire between chapter 7. The first was like a lion. It has the wings of an eagle. I would sit on its wings or turn off. It was lifted from the ground. Today, it stood on two feet like a man. And the heart of a man was given to it. The first, it was Babylon. It's like a lion with the wings of an eagle. Jonathan, have you ever seen lion with eagle's wings? Oh, you cannot see. But here, but you can you imagine a lion with the wings of an eagle? Weird beast. But that's the, but we know that lion is the king of the beasts. Eagle is the king of a bird, king of the birds. So two speaks of a pinnacle, pinnacle of the mark of the Babylon Empire. Pick of the monarchy. Through the Christians, powerful and swift conquering. After the battle at Kakemish, in 605 BC, defeating Babylon, defeating Assyria and Egypt, the Christian swept the known world and conquered it all. And in archaeology, archaeological discoveries, in digging out the ruins, Ancient ruins of Babylon, or guarding the gates into the royal palace, lions with wings were discovered. So, that's the Babylonian's own symbol for their kingdom and government. And here, its wings being torn off. Seems to refer to the culture's humiliation, God's training with humiliation. It's because of his proud full mind. So it's a turn off. And then he was being lifted up from the ground. So he stood, he stood on two feet like a man. The heart of a man was given to it. It's uh, God restoring him. It's amazing. One whole chapter four is written in just half verse here. That's about Babylon. Hmm? What a picture. Hmm. And then the next is written in verse five, and there before me was a second beast, which looked like a, looked like a bear. It was raised on based up on one of his side. And it had three lips in his mouth, between his teeth. He was told, get up and eat your fill of flesh. This is the description of the Middle Persian kingdom. It's been raised up on one of its sides, probably with one foot in the air, in the case that Indicates the fact in the Middle Persian Empire, the Persians dominated the Medes with a greater importance, power, and dominance. And three ribs in his mouth was uh, or most likely Babylon, Egypt, and the nation of Libyans. All these three were defeated by Persians. Mm. He was told, get up and eat your fill of flesh. In our translations, rise, 
devour much flesh, indicates the murder with a Persian empire, extended far beyond the boundaries of Babylon. It spread far beyond any prior kingdom. And it lasted for 200 years. Yes, we the Persian kingdom. And then it says, after it, I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard. On its back, it had four wings, like those of a bird. This is a description of Greece empire that followed with the Persian empire. How fast the leopard is? Leopard itself is very fast, but with four wings of a bird. Wow, it shows incredible agility and speed in action. It's the swiftest, swiftest of all, with an insatiable thirst for blood. Of course, the great monarch of this Christian period was Alexander the Great, who conquered the world faster than anyone in the world. With a remarkable swiftness, like a leopard with four wings in his back, sweeping across the world, extending its territory. Frankly, he conquered everything from Europe to India, swept it all. By the time he was 33, 80 years of age, he conquered the whole world. The writing character of his conquest was beyond with no equal in the ancient world. See, this was written before his birth, even the swiftness. And then also it says the beast had a full has, it was given authority to the world. This is also an amazing description. The final phase of the Alexander Greek world empire, that empire was divided into four generals, among the four generals. Cassandra, Lysimachus, Seleucus, Ptolemy. Cassandra had the area of Greece and Macedonia. Lysimachus, it was given Thrace, in Asia Minor, Seleucus, God Syria in the Middle East, Ptolemy, Egypt. Again, history confirms the word of God, word of God's prophecy. And you see, God's prophecy are foretold. God's prophecy foretold first, and history follows. This is before the existence of the kingdom, empire, of Greece. Hmm? Already, it says it will be divided into four. Wow. That's why we have to honor him. In his hand, he holds the whole world. In his hand, he holds our life, all our ways. You may be able to see him, out of him. What an amazing distinction. And then the final kingdom is here. After that, in my region, at night, I looked. And there before me was the fourth beast. Mm. Terrifying and frightening and very powerful. He had large iron teeth. He crushed and devoured his victims and trampled on the foot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts with ten horns. <clears throat> this beast, horse beast, did not look like any animal. It's not like any animal. It is consummate beast. 
we don't have any, we don't have any idea of what he looks like. It is probably embodied all the other all the elements of the other beasts. A composite leopard, bear, and lion. Much like the beast described in Revelation chapter 13. It says the beast I so resembled a leopard. And but had feet like those of a bear, a mouth like that of a lion. So it is the sum of all the past. So incredible Roman Empire. Some of all the past. Roman Empire lasted 1,500 years. Other kingdoms, in maximum 20 years. See the description here. Terrifying and frightening and very powerful. First of all, that's uh, dreadful and terrible and very powerful, exceedingly strong. It had large iron teeth. That speaks of the ability to crush and devour, ripping, tearing, and shedding. Mm. Crushing, it devours its victims, trampled underfoot, there was left. nothing is left. It stamped the residue with its feet. And it's different from all the former beasts. It's written again in verse 19. Then I want to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying, with its iron teeth, bronze claws. The beast that crushed and devoured its victims, trampled on the foot, whatever was left. It's written again. It crushed and devoured the whole world. Three times this kingdom is written. And then it says that the ten horns. The horn refers to power and authority. So ten horns are ten kings, written in verse 24, who will come from this kingdom. See? Ten toes in chapter 2. The ten horns, there are ten kings. So until we thought about for kingdoms, for world empires, Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and Rome. These are written also in chapter two, but different perspective was written, described as four beasts, but now something particular written here comes. What's that? In verse eight, when I was thinking about the homes, there before me was another home, a little one, which came up among them. The first horns were uprooted before it. The horn had eyes like the eyes of a man, the mouth that spoke boastfully. This little horn refers to Antichrist, the final ruler of the final form of the Roman Empire. When you read chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 continually, Daniel describes the Antichrist. Yodilukon, in chapter 8, a stone-faced king, a man of intrigue, a prince, a king, who does as he preaches, sets himself up above God. He describes the Antichrist here, little one. This is written, again, okay, in verse 20. I also want to know about the ten horns on his head, about the, the other horn that came up before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than the others, and that the eyes and the mouth they spoke boastfully. And then in verse 24, after them, after the, top, the ten kings, another king will arise. Different from the earlier ones, he will subdue the kings. So here, let's really examine a little horn. How did it describe? Although we cannot complain the fully, in a conglomerate of members to the final form of the Roman Empire, there's some kind of interplay 
in the midst of interplay, some kind of triumvirate. Triumvirate. <clears throat> Rise and three rivals, the little horn to the side, and rises. Here, little horn starts little, but become dominant. The way it become dominant is through squeezing and replacement. It's very subtle. This individual is very subtle in his political skill. That without uphill, without revolution, he moves himself up the political ladder to dominance. According to Revelation 6, he was coming riding on a white horse with a bow, but without arrow to conquer. So he conquers the world without fighting at the proper time. This little horn, very subtle. And then it says, the horn had eyes like the eyes of man. He refers to intelligence, insight, intelligence, and mental ability. He is uh, clever and knowledgeable. He is able to give advice and try to solve the problems of the world. And he had a mouth that spoke boastfully. In our translation, speak great things. And verse 11, because of the both words, the one was speaking, and even speaks against the most high God. In Revelation 13, again, he uttered proud words and blasphemies. He blessed God again. So he is a rhetorical genius, being a political genius. <clears throat> See? And then it says, the home was waging war against the saints and defeating them. In Revelation, people say, who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? And he was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. He will be a military genius, as well as political, intellectual, and political. Even chapter 7, you see, he controls the religious system for him finally to be worshipped, appearing as a pseudo Christos and anti Christos. And chapter 18, he even controls the world economic system, then which instantly crashes down, crash down, and just comes to his very kingdom. And one more thing is very specific. He tried to change the set times and the laws. Wow. He even tried to publish the times of worship, times of religious observances in the society he is in. Probably he tried to change God ordained patterns. Clearly, he said, changes God's moral laws, wiping them out. He tried to change everything he can. To overturn everything that is established. We often hear about what we said. Wow. But one thing is very clear. His reign is limited. It says, a time, times, and half a time. Daniel, can you read this one? 25? Yeah. Yes, his time is limited. A time, times, and half a time. It's written chapter 12 again. A time, times, and half a time. Revelation chapter 12 or so. A time, times, and half a time. Just 42 months in Revelation. 1260 days. That's it. The end. That's it. Limited. Hmm. All right, in God's control. And now, Daniel describes throne of God. It's wonderful. Let's read this verse responsibly. I read first. As I looked, thrones were set in place. The ancient of days took his seat. Please read together, please. 
Good. Then maybe you walk white clothes. Good. His clothes was as white as snow. The head of his head was like wool. And then his tongue was flaming with fire. His wheels were all ablaze. Then, please. So let's try to imagine throne of God, ancient of days. Have you have heard this description? The ancient of days, written uniquely in the book of Daniel. In the context, the ancient of days is God. But let's think more. Ancient of days. In Micah chapter 5, and the court was seat and the books open in Micah, whose origins are from of old, from ancient days. It refers to Jesus. The ancient days is in the footnote from days of eternity. The ancient of days is the very old one. How old? Endlessly old. So he's the one in the eternity. He's the eternal God. What a description. Ancient of days. And then, yes, his clothing was as white as snow. Putting an emphasis on purity, absolute purity, holiness. And the hair of his head was white like wool. My hair is white, but different white. It's absolutely white. Hair of his head was white like wool. Emphasis on Wisdom. And fire is written three times. See? His throne was flaming with fire. Throne was flaming with fire. His fears were all of this. And the river of fire was flowing, not static, flowing. River of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Fire stands for authority in his judgment. And thousands upon thousands of angels stood beside him, ready to do anything as God commands. And the court was seated and the books were opened. That's the throne of God. And then in verse 12, 11 and 12, then I watched to watch because of both glories, the one was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain. His body through destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. And the other beast had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. Now, Daniel describes the essence of his vision. Let's read his responsibility first. Okay, I'll read first. Let's really pay attention to these words. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. She was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All the people's nations and men of every language worshipped him. Yes, this is the description of the coming Christ. His establishment of the kingdom, his eternal kingdom. Then the most, the foremost important question is, who is one like son of man? Who is he? Why on earth Jesus identified himself as the son of man? He said, the son of man did not come to be served, but served and to give his life as a ransom for me. He's the son of God. But he identified himself as son of man. And also, the son of man must suffer many things. And to be killed. And rise again. Also, he used this title, the son of man, in his anticipation of his second coming. In Matthew chapter 16, the son of man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his father, and he will reward. Also, before his trial, 
at the time of trial before Sanhedrin, he said, in the future, you will see the Son of Man, at the right hand of the right one, and coming on the crowns of heaven, you will see. And the parable of the persistent widow to teach disciples to pray, not giving up. Yes, the, Lord, the Son of Man will come, but will you find faith on the earth? And he said of his own coming with his words, men will see the Son of Man coming in a clouded, power in great glory. So in saying all these things, Jesus is connected himself as one like the Son of Man in the book of Daniel. He is in his fulfillment. He is in his fulfillment. And in Revelation was we read, among the language stands, someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, which into his feet. is the image of the, the risen Christ. So here, see, he approached the angel of days, was led into his presence. In our translation, was presented before him. This is the sin of the coronation of the king. This is a very glorious, magnificent, crowning sin. This is the absolute apex of history. This is crucial moment in history of eternity. This is the greatest event in all of God's time and eternity. The coronation of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. John goes all the way of all human history and see a glimpse of the coronation, coronation of the King, Son, like a man. Here, he glimpses the coronation of Son of Man on his. That after all going through human history, he sees this. But this is not a new thing. It's as old as Genesis. Genesis chapter 49. And Jacob's prophecy concerning the tribe of Judah, a set will rise, a ruler from this tribe. And God has promised to David, your offspring will succeed to you. His kingdom will be forever. King. Christ will be king. And then you also see a picture of this king in Psalm chapter 2 as you start. I've installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. In Isaiah, it was a child is born, it was a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. Of the increase of the of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom from that time on and forever. In Isaiah chapter 9. His first coming as a child, and second coming as a king, are built together. Then in Revelation, we see the one on the throne held scroll sealed with seven seals. And no one was found to open the seals. People in heaven and earth cried and cried. But when the one who opened the scroll was found, there is heavenly song. And who did to take the score and open the series because he was slain. Opening the series, the scroll, taking the scrolls and opening the series means to obtain title deed to the earth, becoming king, driving out, use of Satan. Yes. Stand as king. So in Revelation 11, voice of, in heaven says, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. He reign forever and ever. Yes, millennial kingdom and forever and ever. In chapter 19, on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Here we see both John and Daniel. So, glimpse of the glory, wonder of the coronation of Jesus Christ. And God wants us to have these of the coronation of Jesus Christ through his words. 
Remember this. He oppressed the ancient of days, stayed in his presence. Human Joseph has to have this glimpse of the coronation of Jesus Christ as we are ushering into the future and sitting around the throne of God and watching Jesus Christ being crowned the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which will happen prior to the time that he gathers us up and comes back to the earth to establish his kingdom. What a glorious and thrilling thing it is. I mean, try to have, take a picture. One verse. He approached the ancient of days, was led in his presence. And then he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. Three things authority, glory, and sovereign power. In other translations, dominion, honor. And the kingdom. As a king, authority is most important. Dominion is given. And honor, if just with authority only, cannot be a true king. But with honor, people honor him from their hearts. Dominion, honor, and the kingdom is there. Oh, people's nations and men of every language worship him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion. They will never pass, they will not pass away. His kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. See, last, see this. This is not the end of the chapter 7. Something amazing also comes. The kingdom belongs to whom? The saints of the Most High receive the kingdom, will possess it forever and ever. It's forever and ever. See, it is written six times. So saints, 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 saints. See, what a description. You just to believe this. Let's read verse 18 with believing heart. Verse 18, please. But the saints of the Most High receive the kingdom, will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. For the emphasis, forever and ever. But emphasis, one more time, please. But the saints of the Most High receive the kingdom, will possess it forever, yes, forever and ever. This is in the Bible. Saints receive and possess it forever and ever. You cannot miss it. See? Truly, what is written in the Bible is amazing. Let's read verse 27, verse 27. In the 70, and power and greatness of the kingdoms of the whole heaven will be handed over to the saints. The people of the Most High, his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. God, we want us to believe this. The heart of hearts. Then who are saints? Saints of all ages. Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, Tribulation saints. You can say the saints are those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Saints redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yet we can think further, the saints are the faithful, for said. And saints, inheritance of the saints. Let inheritance of the saints. And to the saints, faith has been interested. Once for all. They all lived in different times, but faith, their faith is common, interest to all, once for all, two things. So they're willing to keep alive, their lives, keep the faith. With the life giving spirit, they keep the faith, their sins. Hmm? Once for all, interest them, faith. And faith of prayers. Saints went up to heaven, first of heaven, and then rejoice in chapter 18. Rejoice, saints, apostles, and prophets, written together with apostles and prophets. What a blessing mm -hmm. to live as saints. God's given title 
So I'm about from the people of this world. Amen. The life giving spirit may keep this blasphemy title live as saints in this world. We are in the world, but not of the world. Saints, people of the most high will inherit the kingdom. Possess it. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, Father, what amazing thing is written here. The kingdom of the world who create world empires by God's hand. History confirms the word of God. He thought about especially fourth kingdom, fourth beast, and little one that comes up. Seem to rule the world with a slow peace, intelligence, rhetorical skill, even set times and loss by his time is limited. Wonderful description is that there is the throne of God. White, cloth is white, hair is white, fire flaming. And amazingly, this is the, there is the theme of the vision, heart and soul of the vision. The coronation of Jesus Christ. John, Daniel could see glimpses of glory and wonder of coronation of Jesus Christ. God just towards the sea, this prince of coronation of Jesus Christ. As we are ushering into the future, sitting around the throne of God, watching Jesus Christ being crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's prior to the time he gathers us up and returns to this earth to establish his kingdom. Father, help us to believe the kingdom, since you possess the kingdom, receive it and possess it, yes, forever and ever. Mother, with this hope in our hearts, may live the saints, people of the Most High, in whatever given situation, with faith, we can live in this world. Thank you for yours. I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.